ladies and gentlemen, it's my pleasure to present to you the man that God has anointed with a miracle ministry, with a sermon designed to bring help and blessing and deliverance to you, God's man of faith and power, Reverend A. A. Allen. Praise the Lord. Everyone happy tonight? If you want, say amen. One verse of scripture tonight from the 18th chapter of St. Matthew. And I'm reading the 18th verse. And when I read it, if you believe it, I want you to say amen. Here it is. Verily I say unto you, that whatsoever ye shall bind on earth shall be bound in heaven. And whatsoever you shall loose on earth shall be loosed in heaven. Amen. Here is a very simple scripture verse which gives us a proof beyond a shadow of a doubt that our God has imparted supernatural power to his children here on this earth. That is the mighty power of God in their own lives to bind certain things that take place or certain personalities or spirits. God has very definitely declared that whatsoever you shall bind here on earth shall be bound in heaven. That means that God's children, if they will band themselves together, and it only takes two to do it, because the next verse says that if any two of you shall agree touching anything here on earth, it shall be done of our Father in heaven. It proves to us that if two people will get together, they have power to bind things. They have power to bind the devil. They have power to bind sickness. They have power to bind in, in disease. They have power to bind, to bind infirmity. I believe that any two of God's children will agree together and join hands and join hands and agree in the spirit and in faith, they can bind all the powers of the devil. If any sickness and diseases of the devil, you can bind disease. Christ came to do away with the works of the devil, is that right? And the works of the devil is sin and sickness. And listen to me. All of you that watch this telecast in your home, you that are bound by sickness, you that are bound by disease, you that are bound by infirmity, you there in your home can agree with me, why though you may be a, mile, a, a thousand miles from where we are preaching this sermon, from where this telecast originates, nevertheless, if you there in your home will agree with me here, my God will set you free from every sickness, every disease, and every infirmity. How many believe that? Thousands of people have marched over this ramp in the last few years. We don't claim to be a healer. No one has ever heard me say that I heal the sick. And in fact, we lay no claim to any supernatural gift. Though the gift of healing or the gift of miracles or the gift of prophecy, gift of wisdom, knowledge, or discernment may operate through us yet, if it does, it isn't necessary for us to boast or to claim them. The people who watch these telecasts and the people who come out of this tent night after night will recognize this fact and will know that the gifts of the Spirit today are in operation without us boasting or without us even claiming a thing. But there is one thing I claim. I don't claim to be a healer, but I claim one thing. I am a believer. These signs shall follow them that believe and i don't have to be a healer all i have to do is be a believer and all of god's promises from genesis to revelation are for me they are also for you if you will claim them yeah. hallelujah to his great name listen that placard above my head these are the words of christ himself and he declared emphatically that they shall lay hands on the sick and they shall recover who is that anybody that would believe then to make it stronger, to simplify it, the Lord plainly uh, gave us this verse in the 18th chapter of Matthew, the 18th verse declaring that if any two of us here would agree touching anything on the earth, it should be done of our Father in heaven. And though thousands of people have marched over this ramp night after night in the last few years, thousands have been healed of every kind of sickness, disease, and infirmity, yet we have never claimed to be a healer. We have never claimed to heal one person. And I said again and again, we couldn't heal anybody. But there is one who sits in the heaven who does the healing. 
But he's not altogether there because the scripture says the very next verse after the one over my head said they, that is the disciples, they went everywhere preaching the word, the Lord working with them and confirming the word with signs following. Though he ascended, and he sat down on the right hand of the Father, yet the next verse said they were never were preaching, the Lord worked with them. And it was the working of the Lord with the disciples, with the ministry and with the preachers in Bible days that brought healing, that brought deliverance from those that were sick, diseased, and afflicted. Now you mean to tell me I'll preach the same word today as they did in days gone by, and this same Christ won't work with me? Why, bless your heart, the same Christ who worked with his disciples in days gone by, who confirmed the word with signs following, is still working with his ministers today. Amen. It's not Alan who heals the sick. Recently in a tent campaign further south in California, they brought a lady in who was dying with cancer. They had hauled over 800 miles in the back seat of an automobile. In fact, she was dying. She was practically skin and bone. But as she brought her in on a stretcher and we stepped off of this platform down on that ramp to lay our hands upon her in the name of the Lord Jesus, rebuke and curse that cancer, send it back to the pit from whence it came, a lady jumped up from the congregation and come running. She said, I want to tell you what I saw. I want to tell you what I saw there as you stepped off of the platform. Because the moment we had touched the lady with cancer with our hands, she had leaped from that stretcher. God had given her new strength and it looked as though he had put new flesh on her body instantly. It was more than healing. It was a miracle. Every pain had left God had given a new life, a new vitality. Oh, she said, I know I'm healed. I know I'm healed. But the lady who come running down said, Brother Allen, I'm going to tell you why that lady jumped off of the stretcher. She said, when you stepped off of the ramp, and laid your hands on that woman the stretcher, said, I saw one step off of the platform behind you. Said he had on a long, white, shining garment. Said it was Jesus. And said, I saw him with my own eyes. She had a vision of the Lord on the platform. And said, as you laid your hands upon that woman, said, I saw Jesus touch her too. And said, the moment his hands touched her, she leaped from that stretch of healed. So here's what I declare unto you. We are not a healer, but the healer travels with the A.A. A. Allen Evangelistic Party. His name is Jesus. I said his name is Jesus. Say it again. Jesus. And this Jesus is under this canvas. He is also in your home. And uh, as I said, we don't claim to be a healer, but we claim to be a believer. And as we lay our hands on the sick and the suffering, hear me, you agree, I agree, you have faith, I have faith. It matters not whether you're under this canvas or whether you're 10,000 miles away and watch this telecast. Hear me. Christ is in your home. And if you will agree there, as I agree here, God said if any two of us here would agree touching anything, well, whatsoever we bind here on earth would be bound in heaven. Do you know that we can bind sickness? We can bind disease. We can bind infirmity. In other words, we can bind the devil and his works. Jesus said, Behold, I give you power over all the power of the devil. He said, you shall tread upon scorpions and upon serpents. That means that we can trample the devil into the dust of defeat by merely agreeing together because where two will agree on anything here on earth, God says it's done in heaven. Amen. Amen. And as you agree, and as I agree, up yonder somebody else agrees. And it's him who sits in the heaven who actually literally brings it to pass. Because when you believe and I believe when we both agree together, God in heaven rewards that faith. He says, devil, here are two of my children who are in harmony and oneness of accord, and they agree that you are defeated. And remember, the devil will have to back up and admit his defeat only when we claim it in the name of Jesus. And I don't care who you are, where you are, you sitting under this canvas tonight, or you that watch this telecast, if you will agree with me there, as I agree here, across the miles, we can agree across the miles, God will form the third end of the triangle. And if we believe it's done, up yonder, he says it's done. And when he says it's done, it is done. When he says, devil, move out, the devil's got to move out. 
When God says the cancer is gone, it's gone. What is it that persuades the Lord it's gone? When two of us here believe in our heart, we ask anything in his name and faith believing, what? It shall be done. We agree together. And as we agree together, God up down and rewards our agreement, our harmony, our oneness of accord, our faith, and says, it's done. And when God says it's done, cancer goes back to the pit. Tumors disappear. Arthritis subsides. Hallelujah. Blind eyes open and crippled limbs are made straight. Deaf ears are unstopped and the glory of God comes down in our body or in our soul. But listen, if you want this power of harmony and unity and agreement, first, you've got to get rid of your sin. Because only as you rid your heart of your sin can you have this kind of faith to agree with me. And if there's sin in your heart, sin in your life, listen, get rid of it now. And you can do that by bowing your heads and saying, Oh, God, be merciful to me, a sinner. Save my soul. I'm tired of sin. I'll serve the devil no longer. Lord, I'll put you first. And as you do it, as you seek God, as you turn your back on your sin and believe him, God right there will not only save you, but he'll give you faith. And together in a moment, we're going to agree in prayer for your bodies. But first, your soul. Have you had bowed with me? I'm praying for all who have watched me today and have heard this sermon. God will save you now while you bow your heads in your home. Father, we pray for everyone who have watched this telecast, for everyone that have heard my voice, for every sinner and for every backslider bound by sin, bound by habit and bound by iniquity. Save them now, O oh God, and prepare them off of that which will come to pass in just a moment, the healing of their body, we ask in Jesus' name. Amen. And now, friends, we're coming to one of the most important parts of our service. When the sick, the diseased, and the afflicted come for prayer. Everything that you see in this prayer line is unplanned, it's unrehearsed. These people have not been prayed for before. They are now receiving attention because they've come with faith in their heart, believing that God is going to heal them as we pray for them. In a few moments, we're going to pray for you in your home. While we pray for the people here, watch, listen, get your heart open, because what God does here, he will do there. The prayer of faith heals the sick here, and if you have faith in your home, God's going to heal you also as we pray in just a moment. Amen. Glory to God. Amen. Amen.